So welcome everyone to the JB Media Digital Drop-In. We're so excited to have everyone today. And I wanna start uh, before we jump into our content, I'm just giving a shout out to our upcoming DIY tourism and local marketing workshop. So this is an event that JB Media has been producing for the last five years. And I know some of you were chatting with me earlier about how you're going to be here in a couple weeks, joining us for this educational event. But if you haven't uh, heard about this before, I just want to invite you to explore the website and find out more about what we're going to be doing um, on November 15th and 16th here in Asheville. Uh, we also have a hybrid version of this event happening this year as well. So if you'd like to attend virtually, you can do that. Uh, if you go to the website under details, you'll find our schedule. And I just invite everybody to check out our session list for this event. It's a great roundup of classes for tourism marketing. I'm really excited about the new teachers that we have. So again, if you're free those two days and you really want to dig into content marketing in a bigger way, especially for tourism, then please consider joining us. And uh, since we weren't able to do last year, for those of you who are going to be there this year, I'm so excited and thrilled, like I mentioned to Angela, to see everybody because it's been a long time. So you should be able to see my slides at this time. Today's topic is content marketing to attract visitors and engage locals. And for today's session, as usual, if you have questions, please feel free to drop them into the Q&A. I'll also be monitoring the chat, but the Q&A helps us see more clearly specific questions that you're asking. Um, as I go through my slide deck, you can feel free to just ask any questions and I'll answer them as I go along. The second half of today, Justin's going to step in and share some really great insights in how his marketing agency is actually approaching content marketing and show you a really cool tool uh, called ClearScope. Talk about a tool that I really find super fascinating and I think everybody in the tourism world should be aware of. But first, for my section of today, I really wanted to talk about what are some of the trends and content kind of strategies that we see really working in tourism marketing? And I did a lot of interesting deep dives on this subject um, to really get from the experts what it is that they think is you know, kind of the strongest places be spending your time. So this comes from a lot of different um, articles and information that I read. You'll see there's a lot of links in the slide deck. So when you get the recording and you get the slide deck, please feel free to go through this content, click on these links, dig into the conversation, because as most of you know, things have changed really quickly in the last two years, especially in the tourism and travel world it feels like we're just moving at a really fast pace. And so, um, yeah, I just think there's a lot of things that we can come together as tourism marketing professionals and really talk through things and share ideas. And I was just lucky enough to be in Pennsylvania with a number of tourism professionals at the uh, Pennsylvania Restaurant and Lodging Association's Tourism Summit for the state. And it was really great to be around a bunch of people working in this field um, and really kind of, hashing out different ideas and different new approaches and innovative ways of, of looking at things. So I just want to encourage all of you who are in the tourism marketing field to, you know, make sure you lean on your colleagues and that you're spending time with other creatives in the field. But again, what I want to highlight today is some really cool trends that I think we can all keep in mind as we're putting together our content. And when we talk about content marketing, remember, we're talking about everything. We're talking about social media, email marketing, search engine optimization, digital advertising, blogging, um, all sorts of giveaways, downloads, all these different things that we provide people. So content marketing is that bigger umbrella. And so when I look at really what we're going to do as far as content, we have to really align our goals with the types of content that we're creating. So understanding the goals that you have going into 2022, I think will really help you inform you on which types of strategies make the most sense for your organization, for your community, for your region. So again, I'm just gonna go through some uh, top 10 awesome sort of content trends that I think we can all be looking into as we go into the new year. But one thing I really enjoyed reading about was what they call the three lenses. And this is really where 
in content marketing for travel, we're looking at kind of how do we really engage people, especially after this very unique period that we've had uh, going into 2022. The last two years, like I said, have been very unpredictable and different than normal. And I like this approach of looking at who, where, and when. So when you're thinking about your content, thinking about those bu buckets, right? Who are the actual traveler types, the audiences, what are the different motivators that they have? What are the different things that they want and need? How can we get them excited and get them to take action? Focusing on the where, which is your actual destination um, or location. So going back to basics, really looking at the specific things that make your destination unique or your experience completely different from anything else. And then when, really remembering that right now, highlighting seasons, special events, holidays and other timely things that are happening in your area can be really valuable. So I know in some ways we're going back to basics with a conversation like this, but to me, it's because everything has changed, right? So the visitors and the locals need to be educated about what exactly is still going on, when it's happening and where it's happening, because they know whatever they're used to from before 2020 might not be the case anymore. And I loved this quote, leverage the power of content. It's no longer about just creating a blog post, a brochure or a travel guide. It's about creating an editorial experience that reflects your location, speaks to your audience, and accounts for timing. So I think we really wanna dig deeper on our content instead of just putting content out for the sake of getting it out there and really think about you know, what is the purpose of it and how can it serve people? If it's falling into one of these buckets, it's gonna have clearer purpose. So a few trends that I found really exciting, like I said, and I think each one of us can look at these trends and then brainstorm around what in our destination or region might fit into these categories. So trend one is hidden gems. Um, I love the idea that people are really being driven by their wanderlust and their desire to explore and go on an adventure, see something they haven't seen before, right? So a lot of the people that were um, passionate travelers, they didn't get to do that for a certain amount of time. And so the more that we can really show that there are some unique, pristine, lesser known um, places that might be hidden away, right? Places that kind of take you out of your day to day and put you into this other world. Um, those types of things are really having a draw for people right now. Like I said, especially for those people who are already passionate travelers. So what, you know, what are these places in your destination that are, you know, maybe something that's off the beaten path, maybe they're sort of untouched and hidden away. Um, how can we give somebody an experience that they will never forget? Trend number two um, also relates to people who love to travel, the people who've always wanted to be a visitor. How can we really reignite their joy of travel? There's a lot of people these days who wanna cross some things off their bucket list, right? They have some big goals and now they're feeling even more driven and motivated to accomplish those goals. Also, we have a lot of people that are desiring to go back to their favorite places. So the places that they visited every year, the places that are um, familiar to them and sentimental to them. We see a lot of people returning for the first time in a couple of years. So how can you take that joy of travel, that familiarity, that connection that you have with people as a favorite place that they love to go? Or how can you capitalize on the fact that you know something that people can do in your region is a bucket list um, kind of approach? How can you take those and turn that into the conversation, turn that into part of how you're campaigning, right? So again, we're seeing this sort of return to basics, right? What are the core assets that your region or destination offers? What is it that people are going to get that they can't find anywhere else? Um, and if people are used to coming back for a reason, how can we re-engage them? How can we really say to them, we haven't seen you in a while and we really want you to come back and celebrate with us? So using, again, that voice of that, that joy piece, right, um, and building in that relationship, hopefully, that you already have with people who visited in the past or people who know about your destination and have always wanted to go there. Trend two, three, the outdoor adventures. This is not going to go away. So the outdoors became a big selling point over the last couple of years. We don't really see that that's going to taper off. I think a lot of people discovered 
the amazing things that they can do by getting into nature. So if you're a region that has different outdoor destinations, activities, experiences that you can promote, uh, don't take that off the list, right? And outdoors can mean a lot of things. It can mean camping and hiking and mountain biking and kayaking, but it can also just mean pools and golf courses and playgrounds and fire pits and places where people can really gather outside. So it's uh, outdoor adventures aren't just for hardcore hikers, right? Or hardcore outdoor enthusiasts anymore. It's also for regular people. So those things are still perks. They're still things that are really gonna be selling points to folks, especially when you're trying to get people to come um, as groups of people bring their families, things like that. If they want to interact with, you know, a, a group of people, it's going to feel better if they have these options. And a couple of things you can really do is campaign around this specifically. So think about your ad campaigns reflecting these specific options these specific perks, and also think about how your website can really evolve, if it hasn't already, to having a page or even a whole section of your website that's about the different ways that people can be, you know, outside while they are experiencing your region. Trend number four, this is one of my favorites because I am a traveler that falls into this category. Health and wellness has become an even bigger conversation, um, not just in the United States, but across the globe in a lot of other places. But especially in the US, we've had some big conversations over the last couple of years about mental health, about people taking care of themselves, making sure their immune systems are high and that they can um, survive in a world, you know, where we're constantly kind of worried about health and wellness. And I think it's interesting that not only is health and wellness, because that's been a trend before, it's just really amplified recently, but now because people weren't able to travel, just planning your vacation, just actually setting a date, buying a ticket, having a trip to look forward to is essentially good for people's mental health, right? Even that trip that they take to see their families for the first time is a really big deal. So I just took a trip, like I said, to Pennsylvania and had the chance to see my family for the first time in two years um, while I was working. So that alone is its own mood booster. So health and wellness isn't just a type of travel. Health and wellness is part of what traveling and connecting uh, with people and connecting with places can do for you. So think about how this works into the messaging, how it works into the commentary, and make sure again that you really highlight what is available to people when they come to your location. And think outside the box. It's not always just yoga. It's not always just you know, massage. There are so many other things that we're looking at now that can bring that <clears throat> positivity into people's life, that creativity. I think even the arts in some ways can be argued to have a health and wellness impact on people. So think about how you can talk about that. Trend number five, business travel is evolving. So we've really seen, they thought business travel wouldn't come back as much as it already has, even though it's much lower, of course, than let's say 2019 levels. But the truth is we're seeing business travel is gonna return, but there is kind of a shift, not in whether or not people will travel for work, but in why they will travel for work, right? So many companies working remote has become more um, a part of everyday life. Uh, there's even companies that have opted to not go back to the office, but that's gonna give them an even bigger reason to hopefully figure out these events, um, conferences, retreats, when they will bring people together. And so again, I think this is a, a space for creativity and innovation, right? Really thinking about business meetings, business events, and how we can make it a standout experience that's very different than what we've done before. And thinking about those benefits of being in person. So when we're pitching, a company, an organization, um, an event on why they should come to our location, really thinking about that, you know, that sort of universal understanding that a lot of events haven't happened in the same way they did before. A lot of events are coming back for the first time. Um, they might be, you know, changing in some ways. And so, because I know a lot of events are going to keep their, their virtual component, um, so just think about that. I feel like there's something here for if you are in um, 
the world of business travel, where that's part of what you're promoting, that's part of one of your goals, right, is to still attract more companies to bring in their staff and bring in their events. There's a way that you can really reevaluate a lot of the content that you're putting out, the messaging, and angle it to really speak to them about how when they do come together, it's going to be an experience, again, that really means something to people and is really valuable to them. Trend six, sustainability and environmental responsibility. I know a lot of you have already gone in this direction. Again, this is not a new trend, but we see a big amplification of this over the last couple of years as more and more people across the world are having a bigger and bigger conversation about the environmental impact of travel and what that means. And I think we all know that a lot of people love to travel. Going to different places is a passion, even for people like me. And so I want to see the travel world adapt to where we have less of a negative impact and more of a positive impact. And we see a lot of younger consumers are going to start demanding this, right? So younger people are the ones leading the charge when it comes to the fight against climate change in a lot of ways. They are pushing the boundaries um, of what a lot of people think is doable. But I think that's really important for us to innovate our approach to dealing with the climate. And I think if we look at island nations, there's some island nations that have really taken up leadership in this particular world because they realize they're gonna be impacted a lot more quickly than other places. And their tourism dollars are really gonna be deeply impacted if they're not working on adapting their locations now to what's gonna happen in let's say 20 years. So this is something that if you are an organization, um, a business, a hotel, a restaurant, um, a retail shop, if you're a small business and you're innovating on this level, or your destination marketing organization, your CVB, you are a TDA, and you know this is something your community is working on, it needs to be part of the story that you're telling, right? How are you approaching this? What are you thinking about? What are the steps that are being taken? How can you take people on this journey with you so that they are inclined to consider your destination um, a place that shares their values when it comes to environmental concerns? Trend number seven, HR marketing. So this is where we know in the tourism and travel and hospitality fields, it's becoming more and more important that your employees, your staff, the people that work for you are also being marketed to, being taken care of. Um, a lot of this is being driven, this conversation is being driven by the labor shortage in all of these different fields. And I think, you know, the, the conversation about internal and external marketing, if any of you have heard me speak before, you know, that's something that I feel is really close to my heart. It's really important that the people that work for you, that you understand the power they have in the world when they're out talking about what it's like to be an employee, um, that directly impacts the marketing that you're doing, right? It directly impacts the branding. So HR marketing is sort of an emerging conversation. How are we really relating to our employees, to our staff? What are we doing to take care of them? What are we doing to really include them as part of our goals, right? So we don't just want to make the customers happy. We want to make the people who work for our destinations and our businesses and organizations happy as well. And how can we do that? So that internal external marketing conversation, if you're not already having that, it again is something I think has mattered for a long time, but it's really starting to be clearly an important piece as we look towards, you know, dealing with the labor shortages going forward. So the last few trends that are a little bit more technical, and again, I think you'd have to be at a certain level of marketing um, kind of clarity and organization before you could expand on some of these things. But I do think looking at how technology is evolving is really valuable in the tourism and travel world. So trend number eight, uh, VR is expanding. Uh, the virtual reality industry is really expected to more than double in the next two or three years. So if you haven't explored virtual reality, think about this. This is a great way to engage a whole audience of people that are already using these tools. And it isn't going to mean necessarily the cheapest thing right now. Um, you know, it is sort of an emerging technology still, although it's very popular in the audiences that have adapted to it. So keep that in mind. But this is something I think, um, you know, augmented reality, a lot of tourism um, professionals are already digging into, but VR, 
I think is going to be taking a bigger step onto the stage after everything we've gone to, uh, gone through the last few years. Trend number nine, capitalizing on voice search. So we're at 20% of people using voice search on a weekly basis. And I think we're going to see this growing as we move forward. There was a big boost in this during the pandemic. But if you're working with SEO specialists, this is something to really be thinking about, um, especially in the lodging world. A lot more places are diving into how people book directly through voice search. And I know Google is really exploring a lot of that. So again, SEO is evolving into yet another space. And this is something I think for tourism particularly, we wanna be paying attention to. And then trend number 10, don't be afraid to innovate your technology, especially with automated systems. So in Pennsylvania, I taught a great class on automated messaging through Facebook Messenger and using a tool called Mobile Monkey. I've talked about that in a previous digital drop-in, but really looking at how you can make sure your chatbots, your automated email messaging, um, making sure that those things are really, really helping your customers accomplish goals when there isn't somebody there to actually talk to. So having a way for them to get their frequently asked questions answered through a chat bot, giving them a way to do mobile check-in, giving them more functionality either through your you know, responsive website or through a mobile app itself. All of those things are going to continue to be really, really valuable. And again, this relates back to the labor shortage issue, where if we can find some places right now to automate basic things that we know people want to do when they're visiting our store or staying at our hotel or, you know, visiting our attraction and doing something cool, um, eating at our restaurants, if we can figure out different ways to automate some of that and make it faster and easier for customers, now is a great time to employ those tactics. So again, in the slide deck, you will get um, some great information about the DIY Tourism Marketing Workshop. You can watch our video from 2019 to learn more, um, and you can visit the website as well uh, to basically learn more about our schedule, which I really suggest. And then of course, you've got additional information from me as well as my contact information here. But I wanna go ahead and pass the mic over to Justin so that he can um, share his information today about how the agency is approaching content marketing. And I just want to remind everybody, especially if you joined a little bit late, if you have any questions, please feel free to hop into the Q&A and place them there and we will answer them as we go along. But Justin, you should be able to take over from here. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, appreciate it. I just dropped an, a link in the chat to the tool that I'm gonna to be talking about for most of my time. And um, I'm hoping that we're not gonna have any internet issues. I, don't, I have no idea why, but sometimes internet can be a little choppy even when we're both on our super fast internet here at the office. Um, I switched actually to the other network to try to see if that helped. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm here to talk about a specific tool. Uh, we might call it Trend 11, which is content comprehensiveness. So I've, I've thought about this before, this tool specifically, um, and how it relates to tourism marketing in the past. It's probably been about a year or so, or maybe a year and a half since I did that. And we have a, a case study from this year that I wanted to talk about. So as, as many of you know, or some of you know, back in 2019, JB Media Group purchased or uh, led the purchase of a tourism website for Western North Carolina called romanticashville.com. And um, we bought the site because it already had, you know, really, really strong SEO and was competing really well with local destination marketing websites across our region. It serves Asheville and around a hundred mile radius around our area, which includes about almost 20 other counties um, and probably about 50 small towns in Western North Carolina that are tourist attractions to various uh, levels. And so the site had good content about those things, as well as um, some of the national parks, some of the uh, regional attractions that span the area. And sometimes even, you know, we're just part of that attraction. You know, for example, the Blue Ridge Parkway and the Great Smoky Mountains are attractions that we are adjacent to or that pass through Asheville, but are also both cases uh, enter into other states. Uh, the Blue Ridge Parkway goes all the way to Virginia in one direction and the Great Smoky Mountains goes to Tennessee in the other direction. And both of those things are, are content topics we wanna to be known for, but as a balancing act because we can't cover everything about them. 
uh, because we aren't relevant to the Virginia information on the parkway or to the Tennessee information or even the farthest west of North Carolina information about the Smoky Mountains. So um, as for this case study, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we have improved our content on those pages and on other pages similar to that. So another example would be our content about the Blue Ridge Mountains, uh, which is a mountain range that spans a couple states north of us of North Carolina as well, and as well down into Georgia. So um, we're just gonna talk a little bit about how we identified that those topics were really high search because they're so broad and because they're so popular. Um, and we wanted to be better known for them if possible. Uh, we weren't really sure, it was sort of an experiment to see, can we actually compete? Um, can we move up on those things? There are entire websites dedicated to each of those attractions or regions. Um, we even work with some of those other other sites that we've helped improve their SEO uh, for the, some of the same topics we're trying to go after for Amanda Cashville. So in order to do that, um, we leveraged a pro tool that we've been using for about three years. So I'm going to share my screen and start talking about the tool. So um, I've got a bunch of, of tabs pulled up here related to this. As you can see, um, by looking at these, uh, we have... We cover a lot of different different topics um, with ClearScope. We use it for all romantic Asheville work, things like um, wedding videography and photography for some of our clients. Um, and for uh, if I looked at more recent ones, you'd see a lot of really technical co content work we're doing for impact investing and climate change. But I went back in time to back in the end of 2020, early 2021, to look for the reports that we created specifically for these um, approximately six pages or six topics related to Romantic Asheville. So for each one of these, um, we created a report and we also uh, created a Google Doc with our content from the site for the purpose of editing it. So what the reports do, as I'll give you the look at the first one, um, this is the report for Blue Ridge Parkway and it is connected to a Google Doc that was, is uh, currently the edited version of, of what we originally had on the website. So this is the current page um, that we have after the editing has been completed. This is the report that we pulled from ClearScope. What, what ClearScope will show us here is um, what people, well, a couple, it shows a lot of different things. It shows top competitors on the, on the right. You can see all of those. It shows the, current grade of our content. Um, this is a grading system that's proprietary to ClearScope. Um, our word count, our reading level, uh, the typical for the top 10 in Google, the typical for the top 30 in Google, or the next, the second and third page, um, length and, and content grade. You can see longer, better content is coming up through the front and slightly shorter, lower quality content is ranking lower. Our goal is to rank higher, so we need to match or exceed what we're seeing um, from the top 10, so we, which we've done here. We got a, a B plus uh, on this content. And the, if you're asking why we're not an A plus, the answer really comes down to, we can't be comprehensive on all things Blue Ridge Parkway because we don't cover the entire, uh, the entire road. We cover about half of it. And the other half is north of us into Virginia. But we did a little bit to try to capture um, some information about some of those topics where we could. So. Down here, um, you can see um, some relevant terms um, and the search volume, like how it, how it, uh, it is definitely seasonal because of the fall color. It's uh, most popular in the fall. Um, so next, we'll look at the, the piece of content. Um, you can see here where we've actually uh, tracked our edits, where we've included some of the words in the re relevant terms. Um, that we realize we're missing. Um, so when we go to optimize content, um, it will actually show us the words and actually give us check boxes as to whether or not we have included them and enough times to match the typical for the top 10 in Google. So this basically is a, is a live editing tool that allows us to edit based on what this basically artificial intelligence is telling us should be on the page. Um, and it's based on what is on the page. It's not, it's based on 
looking at what's in Google, crunching the actual words of what's on those first 30 pages, figuring out what appears most frequently, and then giving us basically a checklist to say, do you have those? And then you can even see here up to the right of the checklist, um, this little heading thing, heading indicator. Um, that indicates if it's darker blue, it means it's more likely to appear in headings and headers on other pages. So it should probably be in our headers, which it is here. You can see Blue Ridge Parkway right there in that first header. So we have actually gone through and edited the entire document um, and it sort of, sort of bold and highlights the words that um, it's saying we should be having. And uh, if we were missing one, we could add it and it would, it would check it off. Um, so yeah, you can sort of see here some of the things that we don't have are things that aren't in our region. And so we could have added um, a section at the end um, a little bit about the Blue Ridge Parkway as it relates to things happening outside of our region with some links to other websites we trust, which we did a little bit for one of the other pages I'll show you in a minute. But you can see that there's uh, quite a bit to this, um, to incorporating this, this feedback. But we find this tool to save a massive amount of time. And the reason is because in order to do this manually, which I have done before, um, first of all, the human brain struggles to process that much information. There are tricks and ways to try to do it manually, but it takes realistically about four to five hours to look at, to just pull together what all the headers and, and, and content focused topics are for the first 30 pages in Google. If you go page by page in Google and you look at each piece of content and you pull out the headers and write a little summary of what was covered there, including some of the secondary keywords or things listed, and you do that over and over again, what you end up doing is building out this sort of mega table of contents or mega outline of everything that appears on Google. And then you could pare that down and write a piece of content. And we used to do that back in 2018, 2017, that was one of our strategies. And we would charge for those four or five hours to do that work for some clients who had a really important piece of content that they were willing to invest a lot of money into. This tool does that in 15 to 20 minutes and is less likely to make mistakes um, and miss things that a human would miss even in four or five hours of work and only costs maybe $50 for the report um, versus you know five hours of work might be a couple hundred to you know you know between five hundred and a thousand dollars for us to do, or a little less for you know a freelancer to do. But still, a lot a lot of of money is saved by using this tool, and it can be done. You can do a lot at once. You can uh, with a basic account, you can have anywhere between five and twenty five reports a month. So if you're working on content regularly, you can run it through um, your your system. So. Um, you know, we've made those changes and we've tracked the, uh, the, the results. And another example of this, um, which I'll show a little bit more detail, a few of these, um, Blue Ridge Mountains. Uh, this is one that's doing extremely well after this work. And I can show you the results. I think I have the analytics pulled up for that specifically in a minute. But um, we have moved this up um, and we've done that through editing the content. And this is an example of a place where all this content at the bottom here is new and it was added, make sure to capture all of these secondary keywords that were in that list on ClearScope um, that we didn't have in the existing content before that report was pulled. So the, the grade for this before the report was pulled was very low. There was so much missing that we couldn't just edit it into the inline content as it was we did, as we did with the Parkway page. We had to add a whole new section on seasonality and um, list of national parks and forests that are adjacent to the Blue Ridge Mountains. Some of these we cover, some of these we don't, but we are now way more comprehensive because we added all those things. Um, this page now does much better. Um, and here is an example. Um, if I search Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina, which is not the most broad keyword on the topic, it's specific to our state, we're number one. Um, in Google. Now, I, this is me searching, so I might have some, some search bias on my, from my browser, but we're seeing, we're seeing um, analytics to back that up. Uh, I think I have that pulled up here. Let's see. We have the page and then the analytics. Yeah, this is the analytics for that page. So this is comparing um, 
a specific set of months I chose because it's trying to get clean data because uh, we had some glitches on the site last year and, and last year was just an odd year. So I'm comparing right now the last five months or six months to 2019 before the work was done. And you'll see the page is up 33% total page views. It's uh, up on time on site. It's, it's up on entrances, meaning really the number of people who entered the site mostly from Google is, is up even more than the total page views. The only thing it's down is bounce rate or it's receding, I guess actually going up, which is not a good thing is the bounce rate. That's kind of to be expected. If you get more entrances, there's also more people who are going to just look at one page and leave. That's that's not an uncommon thing to see when you get a lot more search engine traffic to also see your bounce rate on that piece of content go up a little bit. Um, and the exit rate has also, uh, it's like it's gone down a little bit or I'm not sure. It's kind of probably correlated with the bounce rate a little bit. But um, this is a, of the of the six pages we've done, this is the best case study. Uh, we're actually going to be building a case study based on this um, for our website soon to show the power of this tool. But we also did this for a few other pages, uh, including the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, um, which is also like, like the Blue Ridge Parkway, uh, an expansive, it's actually the most visited national park in the United States. And it's in some ways, the Tennessee side is a little bit more popular, but from Asheville, you can access even the Tennessee side fairly quickly because uh, it's not that far away. So people enjoy that national park. And oftentimes, if they're coming from farther away, they make Asheville part of their trip, either before, during, or after they're visiting the Asheville park. And that's why we wanted to be known for it and be better positioned for it. Um, so that's my main kind of explanation here. I did, did drop a link to ClearScope in the um, in the chat. I recommend using that if you want to get a demo of it. They're very their customer service is exceptional. Um, they're really good about doing free demos and showing you how it works and and, get, and telling you you know if you if you're interested in potentially using it, um, you can learn a, bit, a little bit more about it from them before you make that decision. But I'm also we also have about I think almost 15 minutes left, so we can open up Q and A either for my part or for Sarah's portion of the training um, and kind of go, we can go from there. Yeah, and I just want to share with everyone, you know, after years of kind of building content out, I feel like it's really important to look at tools like this and, and because truly the manual effort that goes into generating these ideas is hugely time consuming. And I know most of you know that if you're responsible for generating the content. So I feel like this tool has really kind of just blown my mind in the sense of how much, you know, for me personally, I see that it can save time. And what that allows, in my opinion, is instead of, you know, kind of getting bogged down in just the analysis and research around what the topic should be, you can use a tool like this to save time and then focus more of your energy on the creativity part right? Where you actually get to take the ideas that you've generated out of ClearScope and then really think about the strategic implementation and how to come up with different types of content and more um, useful content for the search engines. I just think going forward, we're going to see that we need to do uh, more and more of that. And Karen, I see your question about how much does ClearScope cost per month? Do they base it on the number of users? Um, because you feel like it sounds really cool and it's a time-saving tool. It definitely is. Justin, I think, I want to say that they start at like around 170 a month, right? Yeah, I, I think that's right. 150 to 170. And I think it's primarily based, I think you can you can share a login with, you know, I'm logged into our, we have one, one user account for the whole company. And we, it does, it's not one of those tools where if one person logs in, it kicks everyone else out, like some of the social um, management tools and things like that. Um, it is functional to be used by several people at once. Um, and what's really cool about it is the plugin for Google Docs is free. Um, so you can, you know, use it. You, you need to have an account to create the reports, but you don't need to have an account to use the reports, which is pretty awesome because you can then get your clients on it and even teach them how to edit their own content once you set the reports up and give them some guidance, which we do fairly often. But um, we have the higher up level, I think, which is about 300 to $350 a month. And just it gives us more reports per month. And actually, I'm just emailing them today because we have a lead. I'm not sure if it'll come through to do a massive amount of content. Um, like 
four or 500 pages in about four or five months, we would, it would require us to kind of have all hands on deck, cross train, maybe even bring in some freelance support. But um, the client has eight or nine copywriters who are going to be writing. So it'd be mostly pulling the reports, training them how to use them, and then doing a final review on each piece or most of the pieces of maybe we could even train them on the final, final pass part of it depends on their budget. So we're talking about them later today. And I'm emailing with ClearScope saying like, okay, we have this surge of report needs. Um, what's the pricing options for just getting a lot more reports for our current account temporarily? But yeah, I think we, we have 25 a month. We don't usually use 25 a month. We do four or five most months. Um, we usually have a couple of clients who are doing regular content who use it, who we use it you know, for them. And then occasionally new projects where we do we're doing three to five pieces of content at a time. Great, so I know we've got a few more minutes. I just wanna invite anybody who has questions, not only about this, but potentially about any content that you're working on to utilize the time that you have today. Of course, I know we can always use a few extra minutes. So if you need to go somewhere um, and you don't have questions, feel free. But in the meantime, I just wanna remind everyone that you know, again, when you get my slide deck, you'll be able to click on some of those links and dig into some of the trends. Um, and I really do want to reiterate something I mentioned earlier about my trip to Pennsylvania. And that is, you know, one of the things that I think a lot, one of the opportunities I think Facebook has for tourism marketing professionals right now is to really dig into the use of Facebook Messenger, how to automate that messaging more, and how to use their chat bots more effectively. Um, not only do I think larger tourism organizations can be using those tools, but I think individual businesses could really be looking at how those tools can assist them um, during a time where, like I said, I know there's a lot of stressors going on around how much staff and um, what's going on with the labor shortages and things like that. Now, especially as we go into the winter, which I think is still going to be pretty busy, but might be a little slower for some of you. Um, the next few months will be a great time to think about whether or not you're really optimizing tools like that. So, um, like I said, about all the trends, that's one I've been teaching on that I think is really valuable. And I also think people haven't quite gotten to a place where they really understand the value of things like mobile monkey. And like I said, the Facebook messenger automated messages and chat bots that they've built out. They've added a lot to that over the last couple of years. So definitely, you know, if you have a larger organization where you're trying to talk to visitors and locals, that type of tool could be super useful. If you've got businesses in your region that need some help really getting the word out about different changes and things that are going on, um, that automated messaging and chatbot discussion could be really valuable. So keep that in mind. And of course, I want to go ahead before we log off today and just share again, um, if you're interested in digging in educationally to learn more about what's going on in tourism marketing, our DIY tourism marketing workshop is going to be happening November 15th and 16th. It'll be here in Asheville. It's also available online, but check out the website, check out our schedule. I think our class list has been um, just coming together in a really great way. And like I said, we've got some new teachers coming in. We're going to be talking about TikTok marketing. We're going to be talking about um, accessibility in tourism marketing and how to work on your website from an accessibility standpoint. We've got some great teachers doing really useful uh, DIY things like how to take better pictures on your iPhone, the top uh, 10 graphic design mistakes to avoid, uh, things like that. So we're going to have some great experts that are working in the field come and share their secrets. So if you haven't checked that out, please check that out before. But I want to make sure, I know Justin's got things to do. If you need to sign off, my friend, go ahead. Anybody else who needs to head back to work for the day, feel free. But we've got a few extra minutes, so I will stay here online as we wrap up. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them in the chat chat or the Q&A. But thanks again for sharing your perspective on ClearScope, Justin. I'm, I always love looking at that tool as a content generator. It makes you really excited. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for hosting and setting this up. I'll see you soon. No problem. Have a great day. Well, thank you all so much for joining us, and I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday.